Hey, hello everyone. I'm Sasha, and we are standing here close to Brunsbüttel at the uh, Europe's biggest canal. And in the in the background, we can see that uh, the police has evacuated all the activists and tries to identify them now. Here on my side, I have a guest, and please introduce yourself and say why we are here. My name is Christopher Basaldu. <clears throat> My name is Christopher Basaldu. I'm here standing in solidarity, a member of the Cariso Home Crudo tribe of Texas. We are Estopa, we are human beings. And I came to support uh, this day, this international day of action where shale must fall. This was an Indigalenda action where shale must fall, where activists and kayaks were blocking the channel in order to stop oil and gas industry from moving through this channel. And, you know, this is part of the climate problem is consuming all this fossil fuel and transporting fossil fuel. So the activists who are very brave to be in kayaks on the canal, stopped the canal and shut down traffic for about three hours. Sadly, the police came and very rather brutally using violence stopped them, tried to cut them off, tried to even drown a few of the people that had fallen into the water. The police confiscated their kayaks, but they are all living and they're all very brave, uh, despite the violence and brutality that police officers enacted upon them. The police are protecting climate criminals and harming real human beings. These human beings are trying to stand up for the environment and try to protect the environment, try to get us to wake up and stop emitting so much carbon into the atmosphere. And this international day of action, shale must fall. This is only one of the actions that has happened and this one occurs here in Germany. There are actions all over the world and we stand in solidarity with all of these actions <clears throat> in Argentina, in Colombia, in the United States and in many other places as well. And uh, we want to send our love to Mapuche people and all indigenous people that are trying to fight fracking uh, in the area of Mendoza, in areas in Argentina and areas around the world. We want to send our solidarity and love to people fighting fracking in the Okavango Basin in Namibia. And uh, I want to send some love to Anishinaabe people and other indigenous people in Minnesota trying to stop Embridge's Line 3. My people, the Cariso Pomecrudo people, the Ashtokna, we're trying to fight two LNG export terminals at the port of Brownsville, Rio Grande LNG and Texas LNG. And we already stopped Anova LNG, but we have two more to go. We have comrades here from Corpus Christi, Texas. She, her, her community is trying to stop Corpus Christi LNG and their projects of sending fracked gas through their export terminal to the proposed import terminal here at Brunsbüttel, which we are trying to stop. It's a proposed terminal, so hopefully we will be able to stop it together. And I have my other comrade from Brownsville, Texas, community activist who's also a member of the tribe, who is also trying to stop Rio Grande LNG and Texas LNG. But with all of these people together, we can come together, we can take care of each other, we can encourage one another to come together and think of better ways to bring about a better world, a better economy, economy that's based on meeting human need and not the greed of just the oil and gas industry and not the corruption of our governments that enable the oil and gas industry to enact oil and gas colonization all over the world for the riches of Europe, for the comfort of Europe, for the riches of the global north, the global south continue to be exploited. But we stand in solidarity, sending love to all indigenous people in all of the global south. We see you. We no longer wish you to be exploited. We do not wish the planet to be exploited. We wish to stop climate catastrophe and the exploitation that comes from colonialism, the exploitation that comes from the oil and gas industry. All of this is contributing to climate catastrophe and perhaps even climate destruction. 
the destruction of life on this planet, which is, you know, an extreme case, but that's what we're trying to stop. We're trying to stop ourselves from getting there. So remember, indigenous people all over the world are protecting what's left of the world's natural resources. And the world continues its colonization. The global north continues its colonization, its war, its genocide against indigenous people and against indigenous lands in order to take those resources and convert them into poison and convert them into destruction and convert them into the, the wealth of just a very, very few people, very few greedy people. Eight people on this planet control more wealth than half of the global population. So there are eight people that have more wealth than four billion people on this planet. This is wrong. This is an example of exploitation creates horrible inequity. And that inequity is actually murder. It's actually putting people's lives at risk. Where I come from, where I live in Brownsville, Texas, the United States government is trying to build a racist wall. That wall is an example of the global North's response to climate catastrophe and climate migration, climate forced migration. Instead of creating systems that will feed and clothe and protect people all over the world, the greed of North America, the greed of the United States of America would rather build a wall to block out the millions of climate refugees from across the world from entering into the United States. The United States will take the wealth and resources of the whole world and impoverish the rest of the world. And now with climate migrants and the climate migrants of the future, instead of giving back wealth in the form of shelter and in the form of food, in the form of education, health care and protection, instead the United States would rather build a wall. They would rather build a wall to keep out non-white people from America. That's the racism, the racial hatred of the United States. They would rather build a wall to block climate refugees that just want to live, that just want to survive, instead of actually spending that money to make food, to give food, to distribute food, to build sustainable housing for these people. That wall is also digging up our ancestors. It's also digging up other indigenous and native people's ancestors. In building the wall, for example, in Arizona, they desecrated sacred homelands of the Tohono O'odham people, Akima O'odham, Akima O'odham people, Kiachid O'odham people. They, they blew up sacred places. They actually drained the sacred Quito Baquito Springs in order to use that water in the middle of a desert to create mixed cement and concrete just to build the wall. That's the hatred that the United States is putting out onto the planet. So all of these struggles are interconnected. All of these struggles are interconnected. And we have to find ways of creating economies across the globe and local economies that support human life, not the greed of a few people that causes so much death and destruction all over the planet. We are here today to stand with our brothers and sisters to do these very small things, these small actions that are so small compared to in the globe. But we want it to have a bigger impact. We want you to hear our voices so that you too can wake up and join us and that we can join together to build a better future together, to build a future of human dignity, of human harmony, of human relationships with plants and animals, with the water, with the land and with the air to make the whole world the place where we respect our relatives, human and non-human alike, in order that all of us can live and not create mass extinction, and not create misery for millions and billions, just so eight white men can be rich. We have to stop thinking that that is okay, because it's not. These brave activists today that were arrested by the police, they faced police violence, political violence, state violence. That's what the police enact. They enact violence against the people. Those, these police are standing up for what? For global capitalism, for the wealth of just a very few, the wealth of the oil and gas industry. These police are not making people safe. These police are brutalizing people who are peaceful people who just wanna make a positive contribution to change the world. What we witnessed today, watching the police trying to take the kayaks away from these kayakers, 
and then arrest these people and harm them. They were violent. They were tearing people out of these kayaks. They were using their boats and the wake of their boats to drown the, the people after they've been pushed out of their kayaks. We witnessed police brutality today in the service of what? In the service of destruction, in the, the service of, in the service of profits for CEOs and companies of CEOs, friends, politicians forced to elect. <laughs> that's, what, that's what the police were protecting today. They were not protecting life. They were not protecting water. They were not protecting the air. But today we have this global day of action and I send love and respect to everyone out there who took the time and took the energy to act locally and to think globally. I want to send out my love and my regard and my solidarity to all people, especially indigenous people, black and brown people all over the world who are fighting against corrupt politicians and fighting against corrupt governments and fighting against corrupt corporations who simply destroy the world because they want to make money to destroy the world for greed. That is insanity, and it must stop. Shale, so, must. <laughs> shale must fall, yes, shale must fall. And so I thank you for listening, and uh, thank you very much for hearing my voice. Nenapale, I am a Yes, um, it's, it's not just the striking thing, it's the whole system is broken, and the only chance we have is to unite Global North and Global South to, to have one fight against the multinationals that destroy our life and destroy everything we live on. And yeah, the next clip is gonna be from Argentina, Mendoza, Vaca Muerte. And yeah, I hope you guys will learn. I just wanted to stand here in solidarity with all of the activists. Also, thank you for the work that everybody is doing across the world. We stand in solidarity together. Shell must fall. Shell kills. It is a death sentence, not just for the communities where this is occurring, but across the world. The police and their actions today, if they truly, truly, truly want to protect the people, they must stand with the activists because these chemicals, these toxins are silent killers. And it's easy to arrest activists, people that you can see. But if they really want to protect the community, they will stand with the activists against these toxic chemicals that kill communities, that kill our environment, and that harm our future. They harm our planet and they destroy any chance of life in these areas. So this area is beautiful. It is filled with lots of greenery and clean air, not unlike the community that I come from near Corpus Christi, where we are overtaken by refineries, by the oil and gas industry, and it is something that continues to grow. So thank you to the activists for all the work that you're doing around the world. We stand in solidarity with you, and Shell must fall. Se movilizó alrededor de 100 efectivos policiales. Cuando nosotros éramos, no sé, 10 personas acá, este, y totalmente desmesurado y fuera de, de, de cualquier contexto, porque esta persona cuando llegó al lugar 
empezó a decirnos que, que nosotros usurpábamos este espacio, que si la tierra era nuestra teníamos que eh, presentarle la, la documentación de que éramos dueños titulares de las tierras, pero nosotros no estamos desde el 2006, que nosotros somos usurpadores de, de un espacio. Que no tengamos la documentación es un problema del Estado, que ha negado siempre nuestro, nuestros derechos sobre este lugar, pero nosotros siempre vivimos acá. Nosotros le dijimos que no, que no iban a poder entrar, que nosotros estábamos con nuestros hijos, éramos en ese momento, nos tomaron de sorpresa, éramos pocos. Acá todos están desarmados, estamos reclamando un derecho nada más. ¿Eh? Bajen las armas, díganle al gobierno que venga, que baje urgente, que acá hay un derecho. Y quisiera que contaran un poco eso, qué es lo que conversaron cuando se sentaron cara a cara con la empresa. Nosotros decidimos hacer una, una movilización, tomar a la empresa y, y preguntarle qué tipo de pozo, qué, qué es lo que estaban haciendo. Qué lo, nosotros queríamos saber qué es lo que estaban haciendo. Eh, la empresa vino acá, se sentó con nosotros y nos ofrecía 13 mil pesos eh, para que nosotros estemos callados. Nosotros no podíamos saber nada de qué ellos hacían, qué tipo de pozo, qué tipo de químico usaban. Dijimos que no, no íbamos a aceptar 13 mil pesos, era cambio de nuestra vida, era nuestra vida lo que estaba en juego, no 13 mil pesos. Y que nosotros no íbamos a aceptarlo. Entre el gobierno nacional y los gobiernos provinciales, como por ejemplo Chaco, Neuquén, son este, políticas absolutamente coordinadas y absolutamente acordadas. Entonces, el... El abuso de poder que hay contra las comunidades indígenas, contra sus territorios, es producto de una política absolutamente acordada entre nación y provincia. Este programa de, de explotación desde el fracking, desde la tecnología del fracking, es algo que no se va a detener si no es con mucha movilización popular, ¿no? Y en ese sentido, la respuesta que el Estado ha dado a los cuestionamientos que hacen las comunidades afectadas por esta tecnología ha sido judicializar. Así desalojo violento, intentar condenas. Eh... Siempre ella, como sea, llegaba. Recuerdo una vez que nosotros teníamos un corte acá y le avisamos a ella. Ella no tenía ni forma de venir nada y ella apareció caminando. Apareció caminando y bueno, se, se vino a quedar con nosotros, a, a acompañarnos, ¿no? Y, y nosotros hasta nos reíamos de ella porque decíamos. Tira. Eh, decíamos, tira, como que nos reíamos, digamos, de, de como que lo veíamos como una parte como loca y otra parte convencida, ¿no? Hola a la gente de Mendoza, aquí estamos en Alemania y te mandamos mucha solidaridad y amor y esta gente de aquí son muy bravos y ustedes son muy bravos, igualmente son de, de bravos y les quería decir, arriba mi gente, la lucha sigue. We are doing civil disobedience to fight for global climate justice. And we are super excited to be part of this global action day, with which we are sending a super clear statement of international solidarity.
Hi, this is Elia from Ende Gelände in Germany, and we are blocking right now fossil industry. Two blockades are still um, super nice <laughs> and um, holy situation, and we are fighting our fight for climate justice together with you all, all over the world. We are blocking this industry. We are going to fight the system which is, which is destroying our planet, which is destroying our lives. And we are going to win this fight um, united and in solidarity. Being at the Mosmoran petrochemical plant in Fife. The petrochemical plant at Mosmoran in Fife just last week. The giant flare lights up the night sky, alarming residents. Mosmoran looks like from Colton Hill in Edinburgh. standing here in Brunsbüttel, Germany, because in Germany we have a lot of power. Germany is the biggest industry nation in whole Europe, and Europe is doing a climate murder on the global south. Here in Germany we have elections this year. They're coming up in September, and all parties that we can vote for say that they want to do something to, to stop the climate change, but in, instead of doing that, they, they build pipelines and, and try to get all the frack gas from the Global South here to Brunsbüttel so that we can have our energy vendor. That's what the politicians call. That means like that we change uh, from fossil fuel to renewable energies. But our corrupt politicians undermine these, these whole phrases because they're just talking about it, but nothing happens. Instead, the German government gives these super rich multinational, uh, con uh, gives them about 200 million euros to add subsidies to even build these pipelines. But we don't need more gas. We need that shell must fall. We need to stop fracking here and all over the world. And that's why we stand here. In Germany, the climate crisis also already has arrived. Last month, there was big floodings in, in the southern and western part of Germany and like over 170 people died and they drowned and they lost everything. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of our climate emergency. And so we really need to, to end fracking now. We need to stand up in solidarity all over the world because we have one planet, we have one humanity, and we need to do this together. We need to stop fracking, shall must fall. En, en, en Botswana, en África, pues hay ese proyecto que llama Recon África que quieren hacer fracking, quieren hacer, hacer exploración allí. Y es otro, y es otro tipo de neocolonialismo. O sea, como que nuestros países todavía no han logrado salir. Después de celebrar este 200 años de independencia, pues ya está la independencia está en cuestión. Una cosa que nos llama a actuar, a pensar y a juntarnos. Bueno, y así, y así, sufrir, y así de manera general, pues encontramos muchos más carteles. Los invitamos a que se acerquen, a que lean, a que lleven, se, se lleven estas agujas de agua piloto, el sabor del futuro. Que esperamos que no sea, que sea más bien un chiste o un mal chiste, que en realidad no sea realidad. Es más, pueden escanear aquí un código QR 
en un cartelito y pueden ver más información o entrar a la página www.aguapiloto.com You can see here right behind me one of these big ships because we are actually blocked the biggest canal in Europe and the thing is that they import gas and here in Germany they say that this gas is clean they say this is a better option than, than coal or oil and the stuff we used before but in fact gas isn't dirty uh, clean gas is a dirty lie and we need to tell this everybody like they put over 400 or 500 chemicals beneath the earth and try to pump it up all and the kids over there get leukemia they get cancer people are dying and the governments and the multinationals they don't care they just want to make profit and that's the problem in the system and in this world that we always put profit over people especially here in the global north where i'm standing here in germany germany is one of the biggest pollution on on uh, carbon and it's also getting the most yeah amount of frack gas all over europe so if we want that fracking falls we need to start here in germany where we have all the power and where we silence all the other people and the next clip will also be from europe in spain As we mentioned before, we had today here an action and the activists tried to not escalate and be peaceful. They were on kayaks on this canal, but the police was really rough with them and didn't, yeah, try to be there for the people. And here in Germany, we are even safe. Like I can speak here in this camera, but in the global north, thousands of people are dying especially indigenous people and the next clip is from Mozambique hi I'm Ilham Raut I work for Justice Ambiental Friends of the Earth Mozambique where we are fighting to get the gas industry out of Mozambique the liquid natural gas industry up in the northern province of Cabo Delgado is yet another example of the resource curse and how countries in the global south are the ones who suffer the most from the impacts of climate change that are created by countries in the global north uh, who are exploiting this land and these people for fossil resources. It is continued colonialism, it's a continued taking and devastating of communities in the south in order to benefit wealthier countries in the north. And this is um, a place where even before the industry has started extracting any oil, we've seen 550 families who have lost their homes, entire communities who are farming and fishing communities who've been moved far from the land, far from their farming land and no longer have access to the sea, ultimately having lost all their livelihood um, and are living uh, further in poverty. They're not receiving the compensation that they had been promised. They, the houses and the land they were given is disproportionately tiny to what they had. And they, all the jobs that were promised to them never transpired. And it's just a really devastating situation. And these are the big players, Total, Eni, ExxonMobil, the ones that, you know, the, the rulers of, of the fossil fuel industry who are creating just destruction here and instead of benefiting the people are making things worse. The industry has also led, has been one of the biggest factors in the violence taking place in Cabo Delgado where over 800,000 people have already become refugees and now that the military has been brought in along with the Rwandan military, the Zimbabwean military, SADC military, in order to fight this violence and these insurgencies. These are also militaries that are there to protect companies and this has just created further human rights violations on communities. Um, 
the climate impact of this is going to be absolutely massive. The impact on the environment with the Corimbas Archipelago, which is a UNESCO biosphere, is also going to create the disappearance of many, many endangered species. And what you can do in the north as people who are who have access to these companies and to this industry, the the kind of help you can provide is to raise these issues in Parliament, to take this to the media, to mainstream European media as well, to um, you know write letters to the your policymakers in government to buy shares in the companies who are actually doing this, and to confront them in different ways to actually get them to leave. <laughs> so uh, if you'd like to find out more, um, please do get in touch. There are lots of ways that you can help support the struggle. And let's just continue to push the gas industry and the fossil fuel industry to get out of Mozambique and out of the global south and just out of the world. Thank you. Nope. Aquí estamos todavía en el norte de Alemania, cerca de Brunsbüttel, y queremos mandar un mensaje de solidaridad y de apoyo a todos los países y a todos los lugares que participaron en esta acción global. Queremos luchar juntos contra el fracking, juntos contra la industria fósil, y estamos muy agradecidos que hicieron posible todas esas acciones en esas partes del mundo, especialmente también en Mendoza, en Argentina, donde ya tienen una larga historia de lucha contra el fracking y queremos seguir con esta lucha acá también en Alemania, donde quieren construir esta terminal de fracking. Y hoy ya tuvimos un día muy largo de muchas acciones diferentes, teníamos bloqueos y todavía tenemos bloqueos, eh, que están estables, que están bloqueando la industria fósil acá en Brunsbüttel y también había manifestaciones eh, en Hamburgo, en Brunsbüttel y solo queremos decir que estamos muy agradecidos que todos estén participando, que logramos hacer esta acción realmente global y que sigue la lucha. Mi nombre es Juan Carlos Ponce, soy integrante de la Asamblea Permanente del Comagüe por el Agua de Asia. Lo que tenemos atrás es todo lo que nos está quedando, es todo lo que nos quedó de este saqueo, de este extractivismo, de cómo fuimos declarados zona de sacrificio. Toda esta ciudad fue declarada zona de sacrificio. Nos vinieron y nos rompieron la matriz productiva que teníamos desde hace más de 100 años. Nosotros teníamos era la zona de peras y manzanas, solamente de eso sabíamos vivir. Llegaron las empresas, sus empresas, las empresas extranjeras, que en su país no pueden hacer este maldito fracking y lo hicieron acá en Allen. Nos declararon zona de sacrificio junto con todos los políticos corruptos que nos están dirigiendo. Señores, ustedes estén viendo esto, esto es Allen. ¿Saben qué? No sé si habrá otra ciudad. Otra ciudad que tenga, que tenga la cantidad de niños con leucemias que tenemos nosotros. Se nos están muriendo los niños y ustedes son los culpables porque son las empresas de sus países. Señores, pónganse a pensar si ustedes dejarían que a sus hijos los maten las empresas de su propio país. Esto es una vergüenza. En esta chacra que se ve talada, que es de Espofru, trabajaba muchísima gente. Muchísima gente. Y ahora están en estos barrios. Tuvieron que venir porque no tienen cabida, porque no hay trabajo. Porque la verdad que esto es un genocidio. Queremos que ustedes sepan que en Allen pasamos la media nacional con niños enfermos, con leucemia, que se nos están muriendo. Tendrían que poner en la boleta que ustedes pagan el gas, tendrían que poner la foto de los niños que se mueren gracias al consumo que están haciendo desde Vaca Muerta. Señores, tienen que parar esto. No se puede seguir así. No se puede seguir así. Nos están matando. Y a nadie les gusta que nos maten. Así que, por favor, les pedimos. 
pare el maldito fracking. No consuman ni gas ni petróleo de vaca muerta. Muchas gracias y espero que esto le llegue al corazón, por lo menos. There's any other? Uh, oh, English, sorry. Um, so we're now um, at the North Arctic now, at the end of our amazing action. We, we, we blocked the busiest uh, canal in the world. And you can see here the people uh, that fought, that are fighting for the past, the present, and the future. And you can see how nicely the police are treating them. They have the dogs here. Um, they are cold, they are denied blankets. So, um, usual police brutality that you can witness, and these people have, have fought with all their strength that they could, and it was a beautiful, amazing action. Um, and now I will ask them to cheer up a little bit for you, so you can just be there and give your give your shouts for them, and they will give their shouts for you, because we were all part of a global area of action. And here you see some of the people who were part of this, with whom you fought, and with whom you are fighting, and with whom you will be fighting in the future as well. People, you are alive! Keep some cheer! Come justice! Now! Come justice! Now! Shame for! Shame for! Okay, you can okay. see the dogs are partying as well. So they are on our side and they will shout with us as well. The water comes out yellowish. The smell in the morning is horrible. It is only happening now since the fracking began. It didn't happen before. Da står vi fremdeles foran Equinor-kontoret på Fornebu, og vi er altså blitt nektet inngang. Det vil også si at alle ansatte har blitt nektet utgang. For vårt store spørsmål her er om dette vannet fra Vaca Muerte, der Equinor driver med fracking sammen med andre europeiske oljeselskaper, om dette er drikkelig. Her er stolen til Anders Oppedal. Han har enda ikke kommet, men vi venter i spenning. Det regner jo med at han kommer, fordi tross alt, her står det blant annet «accountable», «visible», «engaged», ikke sant? Dette er kjerneverdiene til Equinor. Det lukter riktig nok sterkt. Det har mye grums i seg. Det er nok ikke helt sånn det ser ut på tapp hjemme hos meg. Kanskje ikke heller hjemme hos Anders Opedal. Men vi regner med står her. I am safety. Da regner vi med at dette er trygt. Og når vi i dag prøver å komme i dialog også med norske selskaper, så møter vi det vi møter i dag. Stengte dører. Det er stengte dører norske selskaper kaller dialog. Og det er jo ingen dialog. Det er en monolog. Og i monologen norske myndigheter også fører og føler seg veldig bekvemme, er ofte at det er andre interesser man må ta hensyn til. Og de andre interessene, det er selvfølgelig økonomisk vinning. Og vi husker de store økonomiske problemene som var til stede i Argentina for kort tid siden. Så Argentina nå sier man at Vaca Muerte er den økonomiske redningen for Argentina. Og da er selvfølgelig norske Equinor stolte å kunne hjelpe til med den økonomiske redningen. Det betyr da døden, dessverre, for miljø og for urfolkene som bor der. Rapporteres om hodepinne, migrene, mystiske hudsykdommer som man ikke kjente til tidligere, økte forekomster av kreft, gravide som føder hvor fostere har hjertefeil eller andre sykdommer som tidligere var ukjent, feber, oppkast med mer. Og dette er jo på kort sikt. Langtidseffektene kjenner vi ikke til enda. Kampen fortsetter. Vi skal vinne. Vi må vinne. Marichiveo. Marichiveo! 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 Our action today was against fracking and the multinationals that destroy our environment. But... Here in Germany or in Europe, we had the discussion about fracking like 10 years ago. We had here a lot of 
companies that try to do it in Europe or in Germany, and in some parts of Germany they still do it. But when it was here in our own backyard, when it was here where we, the Global North, live, people stood up. People said to the governments, stop it. And the people figured out that earthquakes are getting more and more, that cancer and leukemia are going up everywhere where we frack. And so we have uh, we banned fracking nearly all over Europe, not yet everywhere, but we're going. And so the hypocrisy is that we now export this frack gas that we forbid to do for our companies to do it here. We allow them to do it over there in Austria or in general in the global south. And so we need to against fracking. It's a, colonial and there's a lot of blood on this gas and we don't want it here in Germany. Esto es Hagen, Patagonia Argentina, también en contra del fracking a nivel mundial. Bueno, hubo una, una tormenta de lluvia ya la gente se va juntando a poquito, pero bueno, ha corrido a mucho. Así que para todos, eh, no al fracking que el, el Europa no consuma ni el gas ni el petróleo de vaca muerta, que se nos va la vida en eso. Y acá y allá y en ningún lugar del mundo. No, no. I'm standing here with Esteban Servat. He is a scientist from Argentina and he had to leave his, his homeland and come here to Germany and he lives now as a political refugee in Berlin. And today, instead of helping him and instead of encouraging him to, to continue his fight and to talk more about this topic and to, to really understand what fracking means and to understand that clean gas is a dirty lie, he, he, he went here. But instead of welcoming him and all the other people from the Global South, all the other indigenous people, instead of welcoming and supporting them, we criminalize them. We, we saw it earlier that the police came here with horses and dogs and that they tried to, to pull the people off their kayaks and really risk their lives and try to flip over them with their boat. And this is wrong. The police should protect the people and the environment and not criminalizing peaceful people who try to save this world and to save this environment and to save everything where we live on and where we, yeah, where we are. El pasado 3 de noviembre fuimos amenazados por un grupo denominado Las Águilas Negras y nos combinan a abandonar el territorio eh, a, y evitar una muerte, un asesinato. Muy buenas, Oscar Zampayo, vivo en la región del Magdalena Medio en Colombia, hago parte de varias organizaciones sociales, los compañeros que hemos recibido estas amenazas, hemos decidido continuar con nuestras denuncias, profundizar nuestras investigaciones y evidenciar la, el sacrificio ambiental y el grado eh, tan extremo de contaminación que padecemos en el Magdalena Medio producto de 100 años de, de extracción de hidrocarburos que creemos que se va a profundizar con el inicio de los proyectos pilotos de investigación como hoy lo eh, publicita Ecopetrol mm -hmm. con el inicio de los proyectos piloto eh, de fracking el proyecto actualmente eh, contamos con medidas de seguridad por parte del gobierno nacional o del gobierno o del estado eh, colombiano, pero esto no es garantía para la protección de la vida y la integridad de las voces que cuestionan y rechazan la profundización de un modelo extractivo o de unos proyectos que intervienen la naturaleza en contra eh, de los ecosistemas, en contra de la fauna y las floras. Entonces hacemos un llamado a la solidaridad para que la vida de las personas, de los ciudadanos, de las voces, de los liderazgos que defienden la naturaleza, no sean asesinadas, no sean silenciadas, y que defender el agua, la vida y la naturaleza no nos cueste la vida. Uh, 
Um, today was our first action to, to bring down Winter Saldea and Shell and Total and all the other big oil and gas companies. But this was just the beginning. This was just the start. It was the first time that we came together all over the world to fight for this planet, to fight for this one humanity and to yeah, to stay together in solidarity. We we learned already so much and all the people here in, in Brunsbüttel and all over Europe, as soon as they hear, as soon as they see people who, who had to leave their home because of the climate change and the climate catastrophe, then they change their mind. People start to think and yeah, acknowledge that our politicians are lying to us and that clean gas is a dirty lie. And our next clip will be from New York. We can only do so much to like, you know, put this message out there, but also to fight so that people do have access to clean water and um, do stop pipeline infrastructure and toxic infrastructure from being built through the community. Because right here behind us is, um, is a tank filled with toxic gas. Like, they call it natural gas, but it ain't all that. It doesn't do that much to, to sustain us. It actually breaks us down. We do not leave, need any pipeline infrastructure on stolen lands because this land is sacred, water is sacred, our banks are sacred. And honestly, we don't need anything that's gonna, gonna de deform the security of our being. Um, If you're a young person or if you're a climate activist, there's really not a lot of good news in this world. It's, it's going down everywhere. We see that the Arctic is burning. We see that more and more species are dying, that the insects go back and we, that we now even have floods here in Germany. But I want to keep it with Antonio Gramsci, who said, pessimist by intelligence, optimist by will. And that means that we know how a different world can be, that we know how a solidarity world can be and that we know how important it is to to get in touch with each other to talk to each other to overcome borders in, in our heads and and in real life we we need to come together as we did it here in the ende gelände camp where no one has to pay everybody is welcome and we try to, to work on each other and to, yeah try to learn and to develop new new arts of living together of living with the environment of yeah of producing of living of consuming we need to change this system is broken and we need a new system we need system change not climate change and so yeah we are all happy that today we started to interact globally and came together and to start this alliance against all the multinationals that destroy our environment and our lives Genocide 
at our doorstep. Today, these brave activists that we see here on the beach were part of the Blue Finger, but the Blue Finger wasn't the only finger that left today the camp and tried to attack the multinationals. So we had the two other fingers, the pink one and the red one, and they both made it to their goal and their final destination. And we hope that they can yeah, hold the site over the night and that we can yeah, try to set a really big sign against uh, neo-colonialism, against fracking, against climate injustice and for solidarity for the people that we come together. And today is the first thing, but this is just the beginning. We will grow, we will become more. The truth is on our side, the moral and the ethics are on our side. And when we stand strong together and unite and come together as Global North and Global South, then we need to fight the multinationals and bring them down to have a future to all, all people, to all uh, flowers, to all uh, <laughs> to all animals. Yes. <laughs> We're just also connecting the dots between uh, of the the climate sorry of the climate commodity chains, and we will do so as a global international movement. We will bring together and we will connect the dots of, of the sites of extraction with the dots. Uh, of the sites of consumption and we will together fight as one big movement, as one global international movement. Uh, we will become and we are a global community that will stand together in solidarity with each other now and more so, even more so in the future, because we will fight and we are fighting and people all over the world have been fighting for many centuries for justice and for climate justice, for environmental justice and this is, as you said, just to be so. Let's do it, let's continue, and let's go big and scare the shit out of them. <laughs> no border. Shamos Paul! Shamos Paul! Shamos No border, no nation, no gas, power station! No borders, no nation, no gas, power station! No border, no nation, no gas, power station!